Hey guys, James with TFB TV. We're here with my good friend Renko. You guys met Renko many a time on TFB TV. We're at Zostava USA and we're talking about, we actually were just chatting about how silly the entire process is to import an AK because Zostava's AKs, they all come in from Serbia. They're very proud of them, are we yes, not? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> very proud of them. But what a lot of people don't understand, they don't come into the country the way that you get them at the gun store. When they come in, there's 922R compliance that needs to be met. Renko, tell us what that is. Like, what is 922? What does that mean? 922 is uh, what we call it manufacturers or actually importers nightmare. <laughs> uh, but also that's a, that's a rule uh, imposed on, uh, on uh, importers where you cannot have more than 10 importer parts on AK. Per ATF, AK has 16 parts. Mm -hmm. The, let's say, our ZPAP has 16 parts. It cannot have more than 10 importer parts. So that involves a lot of work, and uh, uh, we'll have a chance to show you some of that, too. You could do all of this. In fact, you wish you could do it all in Serbia. Yeah. But if you did that and imported them that way, then it's illegal. So you have to import them a certain way and then convert them when they get over here. Am I saying all that correctly so yeah, far? Yeah, you, you're correct. And beside all the work, uh, that means a lot of expenses, right? A uh, uh, lot of labor, a lot of hours so we put in each AK in order to bring it back to life. Right, uh, and that's a very important process because as we know, there have been importers in the past who have done not such a great job with that conversion process. You end up with kind of a crappy AK. So is it okay if we kind of show everybody on TFPTV yes. how you do it? Yes, let's go. All right, let's see it. Renko, I think logically what makes the most sense is for us to see how these guns come into the country so people have an idea of what you have to do to make them into what we buy, you know, when we go to the gun store. So yeah, can we take a look at that? Yeah, right here we have a, we have a setup of uh, M90. So this is how they come from Serbia. <laughs> oh my As God. You can see there's a opening for a single stack magazine right here. Thumb hole stock, no grip. Welded uh, thread protector. So per uh, 922R, you cannot have any uh, muzzle devices. You also, you cannot have a thread on the on the barrel. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they are not, nothing like uh, we sell them here in the states. Uh, and then uh, something to mention also is that every single rifle is shot in the in the factory at least 10 rounds for the function, and then also it's sighted in by shooting. They don't sight the, the AKs uh, with lasers, so right. they, would, they would actually shoot it. So each of uh, rifles, when you get a brand new rifle, that means it's been already shot and, uh, and tested in the factory, uh, even with these uh, funny magazines. So. I, I, I can't help but wonder what the hell happens to those magazines whenever you're done with a conversion. Uh, we keep them. Maybe someday they'll be... Uh, uh, Antique, uh, very yeah, valuable. Paperweight, uh, yeah, something. So. Wouldn't even be that great at that. <laughs> yeah, know. so hopefully sometime in the future somebody removes this uh, 9.2R, so this is going to be a piece of history. <laughs> Next phase is uh, uh, we strip them. And uh, this is how they look when they are ready for a uh, for process of uh, complying with 9.2R. Right. Uh, Next first step is gonna be uh, putting them in the CNC machine and opening the mag well, right. the double stack magazine. This is actually a, a pretty sophisticated operation because in the past, I mean, you had people actually just dremel out these magazine wells until you could fit a magazine in it. But that's why you guys have such good fit and finish. With yeah, your we mag wells a, because a lot of brand new uh, machines here in the United States, and the technology advanced past five five years a lot more, 
and this is fairly simple operation uh, for these machines and uh, we don't want to take any risk. Now let me ask you this, how long does this process take? Because you're doing three at a time, Yeah. right? Each one, I mean... Yeah, it takes minutes, so we will not uh, be specific in that, uh, but uh, it takes minutes. Okay. Franco, another trick to kind of work your way into compliance is to actually, how many parts does a magazine count magazine for? counts uh, uh, for uh, three parts. So we would replace two. We want to leave the magazine body original. Uh, so the, the magazine magaz body is yeah. going to be Serbian. Yeah, and then follower in the bottom plate uh, is going to be a uh, US made. Okay, and that's and what that's, we're doing right here. Yes, that's what the... Uh, employees are doing now. We're testing each magazine again uh, for fitment. Uh, we're replacing uh, original parts with the 922 r parts. And again, you're literally replacing an identical piece of metal. Just one piece of metal is from Serbia. One piece of metal is from the United States. Same thing with a follower, like one's yes, probably plastic yes. or metal. You're just swapping the country of origin just to comply kind of with this silly law. Is that a fair statement? Uh, yeah, we have to comply. So that's uh, one of the <laughs> one of the tasks we have to do. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, labor intensive work. Yeah. You've got the Zastava yeah. elves. Yes, <laughs> hard, hard at work with this, but that's amazing. I mean, I just—it's so silly. I mean, the whole thing's just so fucking silly. Yeah, so, so I, all so these guys instantly... are gun enthusiasts, hardworking people. They love guns. They love Zastava and uh, we love them, so. Yeah, I mean, two out of three ain't bad. Like, could I get a job doing this if I love guns and I love Zastavo, I'm just not a, a hard worker at all? If, like, you're, if your law of practice does not do well, <laughs> you're welcome to, to come here. Then we have to remove the, the what we call thread protector on the, on the muzzle that's welded. Comes right. in welded and uh, we also build a fixture for that. And uh, at the same time, we would check the sites if they're in line. Right. See, this is my favorite thing yeah. because that's a problem with AKs that have been imported in the past. The sites aren't properly aligned, but you also have to import it with the thread protector welded in place. Yes. You know, so it's uh, technically a non-threaded barrel. You guys have concocted this ingenious device where you check to make sure that the sites are aligned the same time you also remove the, the weld, is that right? Every single rifle goes through this device because we don't want customers uh, getting the rifles uh, with canted sights, uh, even though a lot of manufacturers uh, don't will, care. Oh, yeah. Not that they don't care. The process of manufacturing AK is like that, that there are tolerances. Uh, and uh, especially Zastava uh, sells most of the production to military and uh, uh, military market. I think this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen because you can not only check for a typical problem point mm -hmm. with most imported AKs, but at the same time you can knock off that silly welded on thread protector. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I mean, we pretty much have like a completed AK receiver, am I right? And then you've got like your 922R compliance. What, what do we have to do after this? After that, depending on the, on the skill, we, we install furniture. So this is one of, uh, one of the 922R compliant parts, uh, but the trick is lower and upper handguard are considered one part. So we have to do a lot of work in order to uh, make this one in the United States. As you can see, the ferrule uh, is installed now in the device that we also built here in-house. In to kind of uh, make every part uh, consi consistently uh, within a spec. So you know, I'm looking at process. half a part. That's half a part. This is half a part. Yeah. And that's so there is a there is the... a spacer that goes here, and then the spring leaf also, and that's one part. So all right. this work is to comply with one part. Sure. So not only is the law totally silly, but they can't count right either. All these parts are 
uh, made in the United States, and that's maybe a good part where we indirectly yeah. employ hundreds of people. The good thing also, customers at the end, in their hands, they're holding AK the way it should look. Have we ruled out a potential tree farmer conspiracy? I mean, this is a lot of walnut that I'm seeing around here. I mean, you know, I'm just throwing it out there, guys. I mean, you, you do what you want with that. I'm just saying it's possible. What's our next step? I, I feel like any second now we've got to be done with this process. But... Uh, now we have to install all the all the hardware on the furniture and install furniture itself on the on the rifle and also install the uh, muzzle device. So now we have uh, we have all the parts ready. Uh, now uh, Franz uh, is installing a lower hand guard, and this is where where we rely on uh, American manufacturers to be uh, within the specs, mm -hmm. because whatever metal meets wood, uh, the the measures uh, right. have to be uh, within Pretty the specs. Close, yeah. yeah. What's the most popular wood type for the Zastava furniture? I would say uh, American Walnut and uh, Serbian Red. That's funny. Uh, Serbian Red passed. Uh, it used to be a uh, uh, second play used to be a uh, uh, light uh, maple. Uh -huh. But right now, Walnut and, uh, and, the, and Serbian the Serbian Red. red. Yeah. So this looks to me, Ranko, like matching serial numbers, like an all Serbian bolt carrier group unit with piston. Are there any US parts here? No. Uh, everything that goes inside the receiver uh, and, and the barrel, it's all Serbian made. And uh, that's another thing that uh, we, we had an easier option to do 922R. We could have just replaced a, a trigger group that counts for uh, three parts and maybe not to do uh, uh, furniture or uh, front handguards, which require a lot of uh, uh, labor and they are quite expensive to get a American walnut knife now in the United States. It's, it's quite expensive. Uh, but we decided not to compromise the wins uh, wisdom of, uh, of uh, Zastava <laughs> sure, sure. and the experience of 169 years in uh, uh, manufacturing of firearms. Some people would uh, think uh, replacing trigger group, it's easy, just drop right. in. Uh, it's not. Uh, and we have sometimes issues where customers would install aftermarket uh, trigger groups. And uh, this is also a warning for uh, your viewers. Do not uh, uh, change trigger group. Uh, unless uh, you are qualified uh, gunsmith or take it to a qual qualified gunsmith because the, the profiles of hammer and all the parts are, are different from Zastava to, to let's say, Romanian manufacturer or Bulgarian. Right. And uh, it can cause uh, damage and uh, possibly even injury. Uh, we measure one of the manufacturers of uh, Trigger Group in the United States. That's uh, uh, very, very common. Uh, we measure the force needed to push down the hammer. It's five times larger than uh, a force to push uh, uh, the hammer down uh, of uh, Zastava trigger group. That means after five or 6,000 rounds, the, the bolt will change the hardness of material and, and possibly get damaged. Uh, so that's why we didn't take an easy way. Uh, we took it a little bit harder way and more expensive we leave all the parts. Everything inside the receiver, original. Original. Barrel, yeah. original, everything we're looking and at And that's here. why we, we replaced the uh, muzzle brake we installed, which uh, actually doesn't count if uh, you can leave it without, uh, without the muzzle brake, mm -hmm. but then uh, AK needs to have one. Right. And then we would install furniture and then we play with magazines also in order to give you as authentic Serbian AK as you can be. We're done, and Renko, you and I are friends, but I know you're probably not gonna tell me an honest answer to this question because it's commercially sensitive, but I mean, this seems like a very expensive process that you do, and again, a, a silly and redundant process, because this could all be done in Serbia instead of here. I mean, this has to be expensive. How much does 
this cost? It costs, I can tell you, it costs more. Uh, we invest more in every single rifle than we, we pay for original product. Mm -hmm. uh, that tells you that, let's say, if there was no 922R compliance, uh, the rifles would be a little bit more expensive because in Serbia, because they would have to install all these parts, mm -hmm. the, the stocks and, the, uh, and everything else, but uh, then end user would probably get a, a cheaper product. Yeah, I mean, it would be about half as much, is that? Uh, not half, is? but uh, because again, in Serbia, then they would have to, like, like this, they put they a come whole stock do, that yeah, is, yeah. Uh, you know, not uh, very expensive as yeah. a, let's say, side folder. That's how it is. Uh, uh, the good thing about all this, uh, we think after all this struggle to get these rifles the, the way they look now, customers get a good product. Thinking out loud, but like if I read comments with people kind of bitching about, you know, it's like, oh, AKs shouldn't cost a thousand dollars. You know, it's <laughs> like, I, I think that would kind of irritate me because I feel like a lot of people don't know what all goes into this. It's manufactured in Serbia, it's shipped over here, and then you guys are basically remanufacturing. Yeah. A lot of people have AKs from, let's say, 20 years ago, when there was no 922R compliance, and that's why they were a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, with the 922R, with all these that you, you've seen that we do, uh, that's where the money goes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, inflation. It's not 15 yeah, years sure. ago, you had cigarettes for 90 cents. Now they're $15 in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Same goes for gasoline. <laughs> so why not take AKs to increase Yeah, price sure, yeah, why yeah. not? So I, I mean, I think if you're looking at like cigarettes, gas, AKs, you're probably a little bit more stable on the AK mm -hmm. side than anything. But uh, I can tell you if uh, there was no 922R uh, compliance, uh, uh, end user would be a lot happier because they would get the same quality for less money. This is something that I've wondered about and I really appreciate you taking your time to walk us through show us everything, show everything to TFB TV viewers. We're glad to be here. We've got more content coming up, including some new guns yes. that you know we're not gonna be able to show for a while. But thanks again, Renko. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more from Zasva USA.